the time has come for me to switch from Thingiverse to something better. Today we're going to talk about why I'm switching to printables.com and why maybe you should too. Just because you've been using something for a long time doesn't mean that you should use it forever. And I've been on Thingiverse for almost 10 years now, my first thing being uploaded September 2012. For the most part, Thingiverse has served me well, but some recent problems, development from its competitors, and encouragement from my patrons has pushed me towards trying something different, so let's explore further. You probably already know this, but Thingiverse is a 3D file sharing repository. Let's say you design some sort of doohickey, print it out, refine it, and make sure it's working as it should be. You can then place the files and instructions on Thingiverse for other people to follow. Some people might choose to make it without alteration, whereas others might choose to remix your design, releasing it with improvements or changes to suit their particular setup. The willingness to share designs for free is one of the best aspects of the 3D printing community. You will get the most out of a 3D printer by being able to 3D model yourself, but file sharing sites like Thingiverse mean you still have a way to print many objects without investing in this skill set. The chances are, whatever your hobby or area of interest, if you head to a file sharing site, you'll find free designs to help you enjoy your hobbies more. Furthermore, Thingiverse has an education section with specific objects designed to be used as teaching aids in the classroom. It has in the past had design competitions with prizes, and there is an additional community aspect with many groups offering a message board style interface for troubleshooting and sharing mods. Like I said, this setup has worked well for me for a long time now, so why am I changing? It seems clear to me that Thingiverse has become less of a priority for MakerBot over the last couple of years. Remember those competitions we were talking about? Well, there's no longer a link to them on the front page, and the most recent one closed in October 2020, so it doesn't seem like there's any new competitions coming anytime soon. In recent years, Thingiverse has also suffered performance problems, as outlined in this video from Uncle Jesse. Around that time, Thingiverse had advertisements added, which presumably would help pay for hosting costs. But even that had some major problems, with some wildly inappropriate ads being added to the site, as shown by Tim from TH3D in this live stream. Thankfully that's been fixed, but other problems have emerged. For instance, the download all files button, used to give you a nice zip file with the license, all of the text from the thing description, a folder with images, and a folder with all of the 3D files. But now when we click it, it simply scrolls down to the file section and we have to do everything manually, which is less than ideal if you're downloading something with many parts. A workaround my patrons have shared with me is to simply add zip to the URL. You'll then get the zip file, but as you just saw, this is not foolproof as some of the images have been left out. But none of these problems are even the worst, as covered by Angus from Maker's Muse late last year. In short, Thingiverse had a massive data breach, with information leaked, such as usernames and encrypted passwords. And as my patrons and I scrambled to change our account details, some people found that technicalities with how their account was made prevented the password change interface from even showing. This isn't meant to be a hit piece against Thingiverse, but that really is quite a list. Just like when I finally switched from Simplify 3D to Super Slicer, I can't continue to support a product that's simply resting on its laurels when there's other options out there with richer features and active development. The file sharing site that I'm switching to is printables.com. And if the name doesn't seem familiar, that's because it's recently being rebranded from prusaprinters.org in an attempt to serve the wider 3D printing community and not just owners of Prusa 3D printers. At its core, the functionality is the same as other sites, where users can upload 3D models, including any relevant files, instructions on how to print, other users can post makes and ask questions, and there's also the facility to remix with linked attribution back to the original. In addition to hosting models, users can also create events, and to help build the community, just like on Thingiverse, there's user groups as well. And like Thingiverse used to do, we have competitions, open to all users, with prizes of filament, vouchers, and even complete 3D printers. One other really nice feature is the Prusa Meter reward system. And once your Prusa Meter hits 350, which can be built up from basic things such as filling out your profile, but also goes up from uploading popular models, you can trade these points in for things like free filament and merchandise. 
On our main profile, we also have badges which act like achievements in video games, and some people might find those fun to achieve one by one. This site is undergoing active development, and you'll notice too that there's also no advertisements. One of the main reasons I've chosen to switch to this site is that I've got a fair amount of designs on Thingiverse that I need to transport over. And printables.com has a Thingiverse import function that we're going to take a look at in more detail shortly. The way I see it, Printables already has everything that Thingiverse does and more, and it's constantly being improved. So how do we use it? To get started, you're going to need to create an account. And to do that, we click on Login and then create an account. The information required is what we've come to expect from most sites with emails, passwords, and usernames. With all of this filled in, we can then click sign up. We'll then be sent an activation email where we click the link to complete the creation of our account. After logging back in and coming to our account settings, we can upload a profile picture, but most importantly, set up two-step verification, which makes our account a lot more secure. So how about uploading an object? Well, to do that, we'll come to create and then click model. We can drag and drop both 3D models, CAD files, PDF, images, etc. onto this box. They'll upload in the background. And if we scroll down, we'll see our object listed with the ability to add an individual note for each file. For large projects, we can also add folders and organize the individual parts within them. If you want your object to be open source, you can copy the link for the source CAD and add this into the appropriate field. Overall, the website is extremely intuitive and easy to use. The initial fields are limited in order to keep them brief, and we have a remix box with a search feature to easily find objects on printables that we've based our design on. For the bulk of your instructions, you'll use the description field. And the highlight here is a straightforward what you see is what you get editor. That means as you add content, just like in a word processor, you can highlight, change colors, fonts, add bullet points, numbered lists, images, tables, videos, and more. My first project that I uploaded was quite complicated and I was able to easily format all of the information with subheadings and embedding videos and links as required. Below this, there's a section where you can add photos, including designating the cover photo. You'll need at least one and a four to three aspect ratio seems to work best. One last thing, down the bottom we have a choice of licenses and this is convenient because common licenses are listed and then explained after you pick one. You can continue to save drafts without losing the ability to edit the page. And once you're done, you can click to toggle published and click publish now. Future edits are made by clicking the three dots and then clicking edit. Personally, I find the whole interface simple yet effective. The last thing we need to look at is how to import bulk models from Thingiverse. Let's say we want to migrate all of our designs from Thingiverse. To do that, we come up to create and then go to Thingiverse import. There's a couple of steps of setup and the first being to get your Thingiverse profile link. We simply come to our profile and copy and paste the URL. You'll then be given a link to copy and you can click the box to open Thingiverse in a new window. Our aim is to edit our profile to include the printables link in either the about section or the website URL. Once we've done this, we click on verify Prusa to TG connection. For me, this part seemed to hang for quite a long time. I thought it was stuck and I actually forgot about it until another day. But when I came back, I had the message account verified, and then I was offered the option to select all of my models for import. Of course, if you don't want to do all of them, you can simply tick the box next to those that you're interested in. When we're ready, we can click import. The process now starts and will happen in the background, and we can expect a notification when it's done. For me, my 50 odd things were done in around 10 minutes, and the majority of them published immediately, apart from two that needed minor editing to be suitable. Overall, I have to say the migration process was extremely painless. Images, files, descriptions, and everything else was copied over, including the original license from Thingiverse. And that's it. They've certainly made it really convenient, and that's something that appeals to me greatly. I must thank my patrons for their support and assistance with this video. A few of them tested lots of alternatives and shared with the rest of us, which saved me a lot of time. My choice to switch to printables is completely my own, in fact, Prusa has no involvement with this video at all. Printables just happens to be the best solution for me at this current time. But what about you? What file sharing site do you use the most and is that likely to change anytime soon? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing.
G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.